Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today I'd like to compare the Intel i7 4770K Haswell processor against the Intel i7 4820K Ivy Bridge E processor. The pricing of these two CPUs are very similar. In fact, the 4820K even costs a little bit less than the 4770K. But Haswell and Ivy Bridge E are totally different platforms, you have to keep that in mind. The Haswell i7-4770K is more the mainstream premium lineup from Intel and the Ivy Bridge E i7-4820K belongs to the entry-level extreme processor lineup. But let's move on to the benchmarks so we can see how much of a performance difference there is. There you have it. As you saw yourself, these are some really good results from both processors. All in all, these two CPUs are definitely comparable and offer very similar performance. Both the 4770K and 4820K were running at stock speeds, so nothing was overclocked here. In most cases you won't notice any difference between these two CPUs. When it comes to rendering though, the 4770K beats the 4820K. Overall, you could say the 4820K performs a little bit worse than the 4770K Haswell processor. In gaming, you won't notice a big difference as well. The real strengths of the 4820K are the temperatures, the quad-channel memory support and the much easier overclocking. As you saw yourself, the 4820K ran a lot cooler than the 4770K and you also get to see that when overclocking. You could overclock the 4820K fairly high while still maintaining low temperatures, while with the 4770K the temperatures would be extremely high. However, the performance per clock speed is much better with the newer i7-4770K. Well, it actually isn't newer, but I mean the architecture. 
because Ivy Bridge E, as the name already tells, is based off the Ivy Bridge architecture, which now is already older. However, the 4820K supports quad-channel memory, while the 4770K only supports dual-channel. Therefore, you can have much higher RAM capacities if you need that, and in certain applications, you will really benefit from the quad-channel technology. The power consumption of the 4820K is higher, but the 4820K really is meant for overclocking. You really don't even need to increase the voltage that much, or at all, to even get to 4.3 GHz. And that overclock blows the 4770K away already. And the good thing is, when not increasing the voltage, the power consumption doesn't grow, and that's good. So in the end, I'd say the 4770K and the 4820K are very similar. The 4820K, however, is the much better overclocker. It's also a matter of how much you can pay for the motherboard. Once again, we're speaking of two different platforms, the mainstream platform and the extreme platform. The mainstream motherboards for the 4770K really don't cost it much and are therefore pretty affordable. The 4820K, however, requires LG2011 socket boards that obviously cost a lot more. So which of these two processors is better is up to your needs. If you want very good performance while still maintaining low temperatures, then go for the 4820K and overclock it. I really hope this video could help you with your decision. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.